Hey there, let's take another pricing optimization example. And this time let's look at a situation that's maybe the most common pricing optimization scenario, which is where a firm's looking to optimize profits, not the number of units they sell or the total amount of revenue they have. Rather, it's the amount of profit they have, which is that revenue minus all the costs it takes them to earn that revenue. So let's take an example, just as an entrepreneur might think, where you've designed a product Let's talk about a lunchbox, right? A really awesome lunchbox that keeps your salad dressing out of your sandwich. It insulates food, it's waterproof. We've done a ton of market research and some production research. So we know both about what we would estimate demand to be at different prices, but also what we think it's gonna cost us to produce different numbers of these units. And we've got a couple of models. We've got some demand model parameters. We've got a linear demand model, but we also have a linear cost model, right? So we've got some fixed costs, uh, things that are gonna cost us to have whether or not we make any units at all, like rent or basic electricity, but then also variable costs, the labor, the energy, the materials that it takes to make each lunchbox that we wanna make. So let's use these two models to estimate the demand, the revenue, cost, and profit at each possible price. And then let's take a look using the conditional formatting that we used in the last example to figure out the price that maximizes sales, that maximizes revenue, and that maximizes profit. Okay, so let's, I'm gonna label some of these headings so that we know where we're going. We're gonna first start with estimated demand. I've got a series of prices, I've got some demand model parameters, and I'm gonna use these to estimate demand. Once I have demand, I'm gonna use that to estimate revenue. If I think that I am gonna charge $21 and I've got a certain number of units that I think I'm gonna sell, I can then estimate my revenue as the price times the quantity that we're gonna sell, right? And then, based on the number of units I'm going to sell, I can also estimate cost. And then having revenue and cost, I can estimate profit. In this example, we'll estimate, we'll fill in this table, but then we're going to create a few graphs that'll give us a sense for how revenue um, and profits and demand change at different prices. So the first thing let's take a look at is our estimated demand. We're going to use the y equals mx plus b equation, and we'll say that our demand is equal to our slope, with an absolute reference, multiplied by our price, plus the intercept, mx plus b. And all of those parameters, both the slope and the intercept, get absolute references. That means that our estimated demand is 106 units. I can drag that down and see that the estimated demand of 106 units is the maximum demand at the prices that we're looking at. So at our lowest price, our demand is highest. That's pretty typical. I already have the conditional formatting inserted in some of these cells. If you want to go back to the previous video, um, you can see how to do that. So our estimated revenue is just gonna be equal to our price multiplied by our quantity. If we sell 106 units and we get $21 for each of those units sold, we're gonna end up with revenue of $226. If I drag that down, we can see that our revenue increases for a little while, reaches its maximum at a price of $23.75, and then begins to decline again. To think about our costs, that's sort of the next step, right? We get this revenue, but to earn this revenue, we need to incur some costs. And our costs are equal to our fixed costs, plus our variable costs multiplied by the number of units that we make. So our cost is a function of units, fixed costs, and variable costs. And if I drag these down, I get my costs at all prices. Well, and levels of demand. And then my profit is just simply revenue minus cost. 
and we can see that rev that profit is going to be the highest in this case at the highest price right it's not always that case it, it's going to depend on your demand and your costs and these are both very simple models but the idea is just identifying the price that is going to lead to a maximum level of profit in this case if we want to maximize profit we would want to charge $25 you might be thinking, and reasonably so, right? If if twenty five dollars is the price that maximizes our profit, maybe we should charge twenty six dollars or twenty seven dollars or twenty eight dollars, and that's an interesting idea. The thing to keep in mind with these models is that if this is based on market data, these demand model parameters only really hold over the observed range of prices. It might be that a market leader is at $25, and we would need to know what that is, but perhaps at prices above $25, these just aren't sold. So we can't extrapolate to prices much above 25 or much below 21. This is why when we talk about the intercept and we say that the intercept represents sort of mathematically the number we would sell if the price was zero, the number we could give away, it is where the line intersects, right? It is the value when price is zero mathematically, but in terms of the market and in terms of demand, that would require us to extrapolate, to assume that the relationship we see in this narrow band of prices is going to hold at prices really low, $2, $1, or free. That we really can't do, so we're not going to do that. We're just looking at these prices, and we might look at this and think, let's take a look at the market and maybe experiment with slightly higher prices. I want to just show you two graphs. Actually, let's do three. The first one will do price and demand. And I'm going to insert an XY scatter chart, and I'm going to do one. Let's just look at the regular one. And here we can see that estimated demand declines with price and it's a linear function just like we're estimating here right we have a linear demand function and that just shows that at higher prices as price increases the number of units that we project we're going to sell is going to decrease and all those numbers lie directly on that line because it's a forecasted function of those demand model parameters the other thing that's interesting to look at is the revenue, the estimated revenue. If you highlight the row that contains price and then hold down the command or the control key and then highlight revenue also, we can insert a graph and we can see that our estimated revenue rises up until it hits its maximum point at 22.56. Here, and then it begins to decline again. So our revenue maximizing price is $23.75. And the last one that we'll look at is estimated profit. Highlight price, hold down control or command, highlight profit, and insert one more chart. Here we can see that our estimated level of profits in this case, don't rise perfectly linearly, but we are seeing that our highest profit occurs at $930 at a price of $25. So in this case, if I were going to sum it up, and I won't type it out because the video is already getting long, I'd just say, hey, if we want to sell as many lunch boxes as we can, we should charge $21. However, if we want to maximize revenue, we'd charge $23.75, but if we're a profit maximizing firm, we're going to look to charge a price of $25 because that's going to give us the highest possible price, profit that we can have. All right, happy calculating, um, and let me know if you have any questions.